Okay, Victor Vega, thank you for joining us. Um, you are currently on city council in Lompoc and you have a number of years left on your term. You're one of five votes that gets to decide some important issues in the city and there have been many over the past few years. Um, so in addition to those big decisions, you've decided to run for mayor. Um, so how do you describe the responsibilities of being mayor uh, on top of you know, what you're already doing with city council and why do you think that you're the right person for the job? Well, uh, that's a great question. I know a lot of people would like to know my qualifications. Uh, I'm a real estate broker, I'm a business owner, I've been a multiple restaurant owner, I've been an owner of ag land here in, in, in this city. I've grown up here and went to all the local schools. Um, so I understand the community and I believe right now that the business community uh, needs help, especially with the pandemic here, you know, and I think I'm the right guy to actually be the first point of contact within the city hall. Um, I believe the mayor's position is the first point or one of the first points of contact for anybody economically that would like to invest in Lompoc. So I'd like to be one of the first points of contact so I can help them through the process, whoever's willing to come over here and uh, invest in our city and help uh, help our economy. Uh, first points of contact would be between planning and building division, the mayor and the chamber of commerce. Okay, when you speak with voters, what topic do they bring up to you the most and what's your plan to address? Um, they bring up uh, public safety a lot. And, you know, we do have a plan moving forward. I believe the police department is is, is so important in our economic moving forward. Uh, I think that by working together and I see what, with the people out there in, in the world today, they're asking for more involvement more than ever before. They want to be a part of the process. They want to help the, the police department and they want to be acknowledged that they're there to help. Um, so that's one of the issues. The other one is the budgetary issue. I believe that uh, sustainability is an issue and the city should, um, be successful with its everyday sustainability issues as far as the economy, the amenities, uh, businesses, uh, without taxation. Taxation is for reasons other than everyday needs um, and city services. Finish this sentence for me. Lompoc will prosper if? Lompoc will prosper if the business community prospers. I believe the dream still lives. I think everyone that gets in, goes into business uh, are some of the most hardworking people in this world. Um, everyone here that has a job is looking for job security. And I wanna make sure that I do my part to help them through the process. You mentioned voters concern with public safety and there have been reports in the news of gang violence of, with involving Know, young kids, teenagers, uh, that's certainly right. an issue. Do you, do you see that primarily as a problem that can be solved through policing or what other ways can uh, you address that issue? Yes, we've had um, an uptick in violence within the juvenile community. Uh, and I believe it needs to be addressed by filling the positions that are currently funded. Uh, the police department is fully funded right now. The, what the issue that they're going through right now is getting people through the academy and, and passing and going through background checks, which are pretty stringent here. So they're going through the process. I believe they're working hard at it, but currently um, they're waiting for people to graduate from the academy and decide that Lompoc is the place they want to be. Um, so that's one of the ways of addressing it. So uh, once we get the community policing aspect of this solved, which it could entail a little bit of reform between both parties, the community and the police department, I think we'll be better off. Now the voters approved that 1% tax increase in March. I think the idea behind that is to help public safety. And do you see that happening? And, and uh, how, how can it help in the future, do you think? Yes, the 1% sales tax was there to solve a couple of problems. Uh, we did have uh, the public safety issue of it, and we had CalPERS, the unfunded liability for the city's retirement program. Wasn't anyone here locally that made those decisions. Um, it was CalPERS in general that 
made investments that did not um, equate to profit. Um, the public safety part of it does benefit uh, through the sales tax measure because it frees up money that was already in the general fund that was being expended through payments that were made in general by only paying off the, uh, the portion that was, uh, that we, we could not pay for. So the payments were just going like paying for, for interest only. So the police department will be better off and they do have more funding now than they ever have. Uh, and plus the city council voted by majority to uh, pay down the debt for CalPERS unfunded liability, which is gonna help the city in the long run for the next 15 years. Uh, Lompoc has embraced the cannabis industry really more than any of the other local cities. I believe it's 10 retail dispensaries now, in addition to other parts of the industry with the testing and also the ag side of it. Um, so my question is, do you see it as a, as a complete positive or are there, have there been drawbacks to it? And, and what do you think for the future of that industry? I think the revenue stream was what actually the council was voting for because uh, through this COVID uh, pandemic, um, hotel vacancies have been higher than expected, of course, and the revenue stream from the cannabis industry has actually shored up the boat, so to speak. So they've actually brought in tax revenues of over $900,000 up to a million dollars is what we've been projected. So, so far it's been a positive here, revenue stream wise. Most of the people that I have spoken to uh, want to be part of the business community and donate and contribute just as regular professional business people. Um, I think what we're going to probably be experiencing is the fact that competition um, by having a free market here um, could affect some of the businesses just like any other business um, that moves into a city. Are you saying that it may be difficult for more and more cannabis businesses to find a share of the market? Am I understanding that correctly? You know, that's what I see. You know, I would think it was like any other business. If you have too many uh, restaurants that serve the same type of food, um, it could affect your business, you know, so it makes you sit up straight and give even more stellar service. So I could foresee that in the future. Yes. Uh, you mentioned COVID-19. Certainly, it's had an effect on all levels of, of government, um, and cities are, are no exception. How has it affected Longboat in terms of the, the budgetary angle of it and the revenue that comes in to the city? And uh, how do you see Longboat emerging from this pandemic? You know, it's, the, the pandemic has affected everyone, as you said. City Hall has had to uh, close down for the public for the protection of its own employees to maintain city services moving forward. So it's affected uh, our utility billing systems. Uh, people are able to forego their utilities if they have experienced a hardship, which will affect the uh, revenues going to the utility departments and their revenue stream and their reserves. Um, I foresee it changing the way we do business moving forward for a long time. I see people going toward the internet, they're ordering things, they're getting food delivered to their car to uh, minimize the exposure. I think it's gonna change a lot of things. I think we're gonna have to take a hard look at how the internet, social media is come in and uh, paying your bills online. I think it's gonna affect everyone and it has affected our revenue stream. Uh, homeless has been an issue in Lompoc. Maybe it was not quite two years ago that the uh, riverbed was uh, cleaned up and that cost the city a good amount of money. It was over $400,000. But then uh, the problem came back again and, and the city had to uh, address it. What do you see um, in the near term and the long term? Uh, is that something where the city is going to have to continue going back and funding cleanups or uh, how can that be taken care of? Yeah, and you know, the main issue here is the funding source actually comes from the county. Uh, the city pulled out of, pulled the money out for the, this initial cleanup, which was around $520,000. Uh, 
uh, expecting the county to partner up and pay a share of that cleanup, which did not happen. So it was a burden on the city and the city did not have the revenue stream to maintain the services that were going to be necessary to keep these people out of the riverbed and to be vetted. So it, it's, it's an ongoing issue that we're going to have to work with with the county because the county has all these um, the, the facilities to give them shelter and beds and whatever. We just kind of follow the mandate of uh, whatever the county sets forth. You know, we can do our part, but we need them to partner with us and actually partner with us so that we can actually uh, find out what this, the specific needs are for the homeless population because we'd like to help them. We want to help them. I mean, they're human beings just like any of us. Any one of us could be out there. But we need to find out what the, if it's a mental health issue, if it's a drug issue, it's just a, an issue that they don't want to uh, address. Um, so we need to actually go out there and find out what the specific needs are of the homeless. Uh, give me maybe two issues that you'd like to raise that things out here. Okay. Uh, the public safety aspect is super important, but I'd like to uh, address the beautification of Lompoc. Economics of Lompoc, uh, we eat with our eyes, we see what we see. Um, as an economic boost, I think the parks and the sports fields here in general for the families and the children here in Lompoc, uh, we'd like to have stellar fields here also. You know, we've just had a renovation of Hawk Stadium at Lompoc High School and it's just beautiful. I'd, I'd like to use that as a standard for which uh, we maintain all our parks and our sports fields for the benefit of our families uh, so that we can be proud uh, and they can be proud and we can all use that as an economic booster. There are people here that live in large cities that would love to come to a city like this for a weekend or anything to de-stress their, their Monday through Friday lifestyle and I think Lompoc would be a beautiful community uh, to come over here and relax for a weekend and uh, see some entertainment, look at the murals, and we just make sure this make sure the general aesthetics of Lompoc is is uh, raised to a point where we're proud. Okay, Victor, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, take care.